Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Guitar Talk with Todd here at Todd BB Music. Thanks so much for checking in today. Please subscribe to the page. Hit the little button down there. Uh, like, share, all the good stuff. Thanks for checking in once again. Uh, today we have a very special episode. This is a 1995 Gibson Firebird. A private owner brought this in to have me do a setup on it. This is really special, you guys, because it's literally a time capsule. And I'm going to show you what I mean in a minute. Uh, if I get some real close-ups here, you can see it still has the plastic <laughs> on the pick guard. And first time on this show, uh, the owner wants that removed. Um, and, and so we're going to do that on this show today, which seems a little bit weird. But uh, that's what they want, and we're going to get that off of there finally. But this is a 1995. Any of you that watch this show regularly know I'm a huge fan of 90s Gibson. 90 through 1999 was, like, in my opinion, the second best decade. I'm going to say besides, like, um, you know, the late mid-50s, early 50s, up till like, the early 60s. So I'm going to say, like, 54... 53, even 52, <laughs> up till about 62, 63 when the Firebirds first came out. Besides that, I love the 90s. Uh, it's just primo stuff. This is a 1995, and it literally is a time capsule. Um, I can still smell the lacquer on the, It's just crazy. You'll see the case in a minute. It's, it's immaculate, too. Uh, there's not one scratch on this guitar, and like I said, there's still the pick guard is still covered with the clear coat plastic that they would send them. This this is crazy, beautiful guitar, rosewood fingerboard, trapezoid inlays, uh, classic Gibson Firebird headstock going on there with the silkscreen Gibson logo on the truss rod cover. This one's a little bit different. Um, has the true banjo style tuners. We're going to get some close-ups of that in the case, too, but this is exactly like the early Firebirds always had. We did another video on a Firebird a while back, the Pelham Blue. We did a whole history of the Gibson Firebird. I'm going to put the link to that down below. Make sure you check that episode out because it'll go a lot more in-depth uh, to things and whatnot. But that had the Steinberger tuners on there that didn't have to wrap around which i love those too these are the banjo type as well that come out the back instead of on the top or the sides just like a traditional old school firebird did but you can plainly see this does have the windings this is literally like the old school ones again this is a 1995 it's got the mini humbuckers going on tunematic bridge uh stop bar tailpiece the classic Firebird logo, which we'll reveal here more in a minute. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit backwards. Um, I'm going to let this. I'm going to take this for a test drive at the end here when I get the pick guard clear of this plastic and everything. I'm going to leave this on and show it in the case, and you guys will be uh, in on all that as well. But again, check out my other episode on the Firebird, um, the history of it. We go more in depth. Real quick, uh, though, Ray Dietrich designed the Gibson Firebird in 63. It came out and in conjunction with Ted McCarty, who was Gibson's president at the time. He ran into Dietrich at a auto convention where Dietrich was talking and asked him if he'd like to design a guitar, and this is what Dietrich came up with. Gibson periodically stopped making this because, as I said in the... Um, other video this is all what they call neck through so from here to here it's one solid piece and then you've got the glued on mahogany wings here with the you know controls and stuff there's wiring underneath this pick guard for the pickups and whatnot but besides that it's basically just two pieces glued on to that solid block just beautiful guitars but they did quit making them for uh, periodically and then when the new ownership of gibson took over henry juskowitz and they bought it from norlin in the mid 80s by the early 90s they were starting to get requests to put the firebirds back out again and they did so this is a 1995 which is just a primo year for gibson the neck on this is beautiful and to find one like this <laughs> i mean this is 2022 so this thing is literally 
27 years old <laughs> and it sat in a case. Like I said, a private owner brought this in. They are the original owner. They bought this in 1995, took it out once, played it, put it right back in the case, and it sat in the closet for all these years. They finally want to start playing it now and getting back into trying out the Firebird. I mean, come on. This is 27 years old. This thing is sat in a case. It doesn't have, even have any dust on it. Just unbelievable. All right, but before we take her in and check her out in the case, let's just kind of check out the tones a little bit through the amp here without anything else going on. So here is the neck pickup in a cleaner tone. the bridge pickup a little bit brighter as it traditionally should be you can definitely crank it up and get your you know more powerful tones are great on the again we're on the bridge pickup <laughs> and then of course you got the creamier back to the neck pickup Just beautiful, classic sunburst look here that a lot of people think about when they think about Gibson Firebirds. This is just gorgeous, gorgeous example from the 90s when they were starting to put them out again. And this is not a custom shop. Again, 95, the custom shop was in its infancy as like the real deal. They kind of, like I've, I've said this before, before 1993, they were issuing things and saying custom shop on them, but the official custom shop didn't really get going until about 93. So 95, it only been a couple years during that time, so a lot of the Primo stuff uh, was still coming out of the Gibson USA plant. And like I said, the 90s are just phenomenal and especially one that's a time capsule like this so anyway let's go check her out in the case and we're going to take a closer look at this pick guard and the whole guitar in general so here we go okay so here is the case for the 1995 gibson firebird time capsule edition look at this thing it's this is 27 years old it's just unbelievable it's still got the pin in the lock here it's never been set 
at all. Handle fully intact and pristine. I mean, this case is not even marked up at all. It's still got the Made in Canada sticker on it that they all did that, uh, you know, Gibson's had that were being made. The cases are being made in Canada at that time. Just phenomenal condition. You can kind of see it's funny here, like some of the cream, what was originally cream trim on here has yellowed through the, you know, 27 years, but that's just unbelievable. Even the case is immaculate on this, a true time capsule. Okay, so then let's open her up here. First thing we're going to see is there is the classic pink shroud, which we've featured a lot on this show and talked about. This is 1995, so this is without a doubt the original period correct case. It's like the silk material shroud that they were doing for a long time you would a lot of times if you do find these they're broken off on like the ties again these are pristine just everything's functioning like it was day one so eventually gibson got rid of these shrouds i always loved them and it's always great to find a 90s edition like this one with the shroud still intact that's just so cool okay and there she is obviously huge compartment on these firebird cases firebirds are just big guitars in general and this case goes right along with it getting some close-ups here got the classic neck through mahogany going on here with the mahogany wings glued on you can see all that plain as day got the stop bar tailpiece two pneumatic bridge mini humbuckers these just sound fantastic we're gonna take it for a test run here a little bit more as well but again 95 and gibson was trying to shake off a little bit of their negative image they had from the norland era where a lot of the quality was a little bit shoddy uh don't get me wrong we're gonna feature a lot of norland stuff coming up here i think they had some fantastic things but you did run across your occasional guitar that you know, the binding was a little weird looking and you could tell it wasn't the best. So Gibson in the 90s was really trying to shake that image and their quality control was just impeccable. And that's why I think that was one of their best decades. And man, this is definitely a great example of that. So here is a real close up of that. You could see that pick guard with the Firebird logo on there. We're gonna take this off in a second, which almost seems sacrilegious, but <laughs> that's what the private owner wants to do. Truth be told, it is a good idea. I have seen, believe it or not, these on models even older than 27 years where the person just left them on and left them on and eventually they do yellow. This one hasn't too bad, and I've actually seen a couple of pick guards like this that are white, and the clear coat ends up yellowing. Owner leaves it on, doesn't take it off, and eventually the yellowing ends up staining the actual white pick guard. That's a little extreme. I haven't seen too, too many examples of that, but it does happen, so... It's time to get this off, especially since the owner is going to start using it again. It kind of looks, I guess you could say it looks cool, but it kind of looks bad <laughs> in a way too. If, if you don't know what this is, it just looks like something's happening and it's peeling off and there's a problem. So it's time to get it off. We might just go ahead and throw that in the case. Why not? We've kept it this long. I might as well stay with the guitar, right? All right, so we're going to come back to that. Going up the neck here, we got the trapezoid inlays, rosewood fingerboard, all the way up to the classic Gibson headstock on the Firebird there. We got the silk screen logo on the truss rod cover, those banjo tuners. Let's flip this over and take a look at the back real quick. Okay, so on the back here, we've got the classic neck through that you could see right there all one piece just a gorgeous shot of the wood there on the back and that mahogany with that great classic sunburst look going on that just looks so cool in the pink case like that you can even see back here on the control cavity the plastic is still on <laughs> so we're going to take that off as well this is just crazy 
literally a time capsule. 1995. I mean, look at this neck going up here. It's just flawless. There's not one. I'm trying to zoom in here. There's not one spot that's worn off. Everything is just very, very, very flawless on this guitar. All right, so you here's a close-up of the classic banjo-style tuners. You can see they kind of come out the back here, just like the Steinbergers do, but this is actually the period-correct tuner, or I should say more like what the vintage ones would be. The original Firebirds had this kind versus, you know, the Steinberger that you saw in the other model we had. But again, just a gorgeous example all right, but let's get to taking off that plastic clear coat here. All right, guys, second. so here is a close-up of us taking the clear coat <laughs> off of the 1995 Gibson Firebird here. I've got the camera in a holder so I can use both hands here and just kind of get on it. This is crazy. Uh, like I said, I almost feel like I'm committing a crime here by peeling this off because it's been part of the guitar since it left the Gibson factory in 95, but the owner wants it off and, uh, I certainly don't think it's going to hurt. Like I said, these can yellow and it kind of stain the pick guard. It's time to get this thing off of here. So here we go. First time ever on Guitar Talk. So a lot of these can kind of stick. That one, that side came up pretty easy. I mean, you can kind of see there, it's in here, it's it's definitely sticking very well as it's been on here since 1995. Wow, this is crazy. It's like immaculate under here. 27 years old. <laughs> this pick guard doesn't have a scratch on it. This is just insane. All right, so we're coming up the back here. Get these all around the screws, and there she is. She is free and clear in traditional style. There's always a little bit of the film left behind that you kind of got to get off or it just wears off eventually. But there is the film on the pick guard of the front. Just crazy. Um, like I said, it's been on there for 27 years. So, yeah, that's crazy. That came off. Really well. I mean, you can see in the light there, that logo is just immaculate. Hasn't been scratched, hasn't been played, brushed, picked on, nothing. I'm trying to zoom back in here. 27 years, like a brand new pick guard. Unbelievable. What a time capsule. So let's, let's get a look at the back. Okay, so here on the back, not as big of a deal. It's already pretty much coming off. We're just going to go ahead and remove it the rest of the way. That was a little under dramatic. <laughs> Not a whole lot to that one. But there was the clear coat for the cavity control here on the back. And again, that just looks flawless and super shiny now because it has been protected for 27 years. I'm having some problems zooming in here. There we go. 27 years, never exposed. She finally is. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, so inside this compartment here, huge, huge space. We've still got the original hang tag warranty with the string even still intact. I mean, how crazy is this? It was <laughs> so literally is the original hang tag combination instructions that always used to come with those on a Gibson. I'm going to go ahead and just throw these in here too. I know that seems kind of insane, but hey, they've been with the guitar for... 27 years there's no reason to get rid of them now i'm a freak about this kind of stuff save every little thing you get when you get a brand new guitar i do the same thing if the strings are falling off or whatever i just throw them in the case plastic all kind throw it in the case since you know it's not gonna hurt even if you put it in a bag or whatever it's just kind of a cool thing to say 100 years from now when somebody finds this guitar they'll be like wow they actually threw the clear coat protector in the case <laughs> yes we did so there you go she's gonna live in there and still be with the guitar but just not in the way possibly yellowing and staining that pick guard all right so let's just get one more shot here of her in the case all the way back full shot that's without the clear coat on looks much better much more vibrant just 
beautiful, beautiful time capsule piece here. 1995 Gibson Firebird in the classic Sunburst. What a gorgeous guitar. Alright guys, so the clear coat is removed from the pick guard. She is all ready to go. Nice and shiny here. Looks like a brand new guitar. It is a brand new guitar. It's basically sat in a case for 27 years. Let's let her uh, rip here. It's going to do some slide stuff and jam along with some blues here and see what these beautiful mini humbuckers sound like on this 1995 Gibson Firebird. Here we go. Let's check her out.
All right, guys, so there she is. That is the 1995 time capsule edition of the Gibson Firebird in sunburst here. Beautiful, beautiful guitar. Thank you once again to our private owner who brought this in. Let me do a setup on it and have the honor of removing the clear coat on the front and the back. This is just unbelievable when you find instruments like this sat untouched in a case in somebody's closet for 27 years. Just beautiful. I mean, literally a time capsule and she's back in action and ready to be played now. So it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But thanks for checking in today, you guys, and uh, watching the video. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, all the good stuff. Let me know what you guys think of Firebirds, especially 1990s, 90s Gibsons in general. If you love them, check them out. If you love them, comment. If you hate them, comment. I love them, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, please subscribe. Like we said, thanks so much for checking in, you guys, today. Find us on Facebook at Todd BB Music, and we'll see you guys again. Stay safe and love your dogs. Take care.